Welcome back. Last video, we drove this thing, the AFI all hooked up for the first time. That was yesterday afternoon. Today, it's all coming back apart. Get a turbo. It's a different car now, and it should be even better once there's a little something in here. In the boot we've got the cooler. Oh, he's beating it cooler. For the inner cooler. A little bilge pump in there. Should be enough and it's going to run out through the bulkhead fittings down underneath the car to the water air inner cooler in the front. The cooler lines will come up down with the fuel lines up into the water air inner cooler which has been mounted off the original coil bracket and stabilized to the throttle body just so we don't have any blow off situations with our inner cooler piping here this is just a dummy one at the moment just to get our dimensions right it doesn't foul on the tablet cover so it shouldn't transfer too much heat, which is probably okay since we're going to be running ice water when racing and possibly on the road, depends on how much ice it chews through. Plumb now into the throttle body. We've got a new correct sized reducer there. Use a little bit of garden hose here, I think it's three quarter, 20 mil, whatever you want to. Depends how you look at it. Runs in through the back, down through the engine bay, past the rack. under the car which you probably can't see since it's so dark into the cooler cooler there we go works we probably won't run this much water while it's actually running so it doesn't slosh and everything but there'll be ice in there as well so it should help because we're fuel injected now we had no use for the old fuel pump mechanical fuel pump wasn't going to give us enough pressure so we've made a block off plate using this old barbecue plate cut her out to shape Paint it black and put it back. Also working on a battery hold down instead of the old style ones that just clamp the the base of the battery. We're making a an actual full tie down just so we don't get pulled up at tech inspection. Cool is wired in permanently now through the bulkhead down through the carpet. Throw a grommet in the floor. Out to a common earth point for the fuel pump and the intercooler pump. It's got a bit of um, 
protection over the wires that don't expect anything to get up there and hit it but you just never know and don't really want rubbing on the chassis. I'm just going to go along and trim all the cable ties off but I certainly won't be using this cheap piece of shit. Decides to go and punch a hole in your finger when you least expect it. Terry's been fabricating again. Here we've got the exhaust manifold all made up for the eBay special turbo. Hopefully it puts it in a good spot and we can continue with our boost goodness. Should flow pretty well too, I think. Bits. Very close to the starter motor though, so I think Terry's going to take a bit out of the bottom of that rear pipe just to give it a bit of clearance so it doesn't cook the starter. We've got an interference fit here between the turbo and the chassis rail, so we're possibly going to put it up here or we're going to go to a slightly smaller front housing on a different turbo. Just that much clearance. Let's hope it fits. Well, it's in. That's what she said. <laughs> so that's better than yesterday. <laughs> it's got this much clearance. So we're going to up the side of the turbo with the grinder. So it's got more than this much. So here we go. Just had the clearance a little bit from this bolt here on. This bolt here on. So if you look at this one, it's a fair bit thinner than this one here, so that should give us a little bit of clearance to stop it from rubbing. Well, while well, it's not running anyway. So to give us some more clearance from the log manifold to where the old starter motor was. We've taken this big old heavy girl out and we're replacing it with this slimline unit which is a lot better. We're also going to give it some of this heat shield just wrapped around it just to give us that little bit of protection to not cook the starter because Eddie reckons we can't jump start it or roll start it. We'll just be using a pair of two and a half inch aluminum bends and silicon joiners to get the boost from the turbo to the cooler. Because we're just using silicon joiners, we need to roll some beads onto these aluminum pipes just to stop them blowing off under boost. And then it's time to 
get it all put together. After a few attempts we eventually got it in there. We end up having to space the engine mount up just a, just a fraction. Only probably about five mil which gave us enough clearance to get the turbo in. A little bit of a massage to the frame rail which is probably no more than the factory should have done anyway. And we've got the cooler pipe made. Into the water the air in the cooler. Kind of just mocked up still at the moment, but we've still got to pull it all apart to get the starter motor back in and make a dump pipe. So hopefully, this being Wednesday night, Saturday we can, well maybe Friday afternoon we can get it running and driving again. So Sunday we can make a exhaust and finish a few more things off. Hopefully. Me!